Quick disclaimer here, this video does not contain any graphic material or graphic images. What's up guys, Mike here. All right, so today I wanna share with you all a little story about how I broke one of my ribs skiing in 2019. The format of this video is a bit different than the videos I typically make here, but breaking a rib was a memorable event for me in 2019, and as I wrap up all of my videos from my trip to Salt Lake City, I thought this might be something fun to share with you all. Real quick, if you haven't seen the four videos I created from my trip to Salt Lake City, be sure to check those out. I tried something new in each one, and if you're ever looking for a fun winter activity, be sure to take a look at those. Okay, so let me give you a little context Context first. On my last full day in Salt Lake City, I decided to go skiing. I mean, how can you visit the Salt Lake City area in the winter and not go skiing? The ski resorts there are all world class. So it's my last day and I decided I wanted to go skiing at Park City Mountain, which is located in Park City, Utah, and is about 32 miles east of Salt Lake City. Park City Mountain Resort opened in 1963 and currently claims to be the largest ski and snowboard resort in the United States. It features an average snowfall of 355 inches across 7,300 skiable acres with a vertical drop of 3,200 feet. Base elevation is 6,800 feet and the summit rises just past 10,000 feet. Only 8% of the ski runs are for beginners while 41% are rated as intermediate and the rest are all rated advanced or expert. During the 2002 Winter Olympic Games, Park City Mountain Resort hosted the men's and women's giant slalom, the men's and women's snowboarding parallel giant slalom, and both men's and women's snowboarding halfpipe events. I certainly wouldn't qualify Park City as a beginner's mountain, but it's a fantastic ski resort, and in all honesty, it would be a great place to go if you want to learn how to ski or even just get better at skiing. Advanced skiers would enjoy this place as well. For me, the last time I went skiing was in 2018 at Mammoth Mountain in California, which I made a video about. Link is below in the description. And before that, it had been a whole decade. Still, I felt confident enough to try skiing at Park City, even if that meant pushing my current comfort zone a little bit to improve. I was willing to do that. As I pulled into the parking lot, the snow was really coming down, which got me super excited because in my opinion, there's nothing that completes your ski experience more than skiing while it's snowing. Next, I headed inside, rented some skis, poles, and a helmet, and I hit the slopes. Riding up the first chairlift, I was feeling relatively nervous, but that wasn't out of the ordinary for me as I always feel that way when I hop on the lift for the first time after not skiing for a while. When I got to the top of the lift, I rode down a little green connector to take me to a blue run, and that's where things get more interesting. Okay, so I'm riding down this blue run, and, and look, when I ski, I like to make sure I'm not cutting people off or being reckless. I prefer to ski with nobody in front of me, which allows me to go as fast or as slow as I want. But if you've ever skied before, you know this isn't always the case as people are everywhere, especially at popular resorts. Sometimes I find myself with someone in front of me and then by like judging my speed and turning pattern versus theirs, I realize I'm approaching them too fast or that it feels like, I don't know, in three turns or so, I'll be on their ass. So I start cutting my turns a bit harder to try and slow down. I don't know, this is something that's rather hard to describe, but let me know if you've ever experienced this before. Anyways, about halfway down this blue run, the edge of my ski grabbed the snow weirdly and boom, down I went. <laughs> and this footage is so bad too, because one, I was only recording it with a GoPro mounted on my head. I wish I had video of me falling from like a side angle or something more visually interesting. And two, because of the wide angle of the GoPro and because it was mounted on my head, it looks like I was skiing at like five miles per hour. <laughs> Maybe I should speed it up and post so that it looks more dramatic. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> so yeah, first run of the day at Park City and I straight up ate it and went face forward into the snow. The odd thing was when I got back up to find my skis, I realized they were right behind me. If you've ever fallen while skiing, you know that this isn't very common. I mean, I feel like usually when you fall, you either lose everything poles and skis, and you have to walk back up the mountain like 20 feet to get everything. Or you have everything nearby, but one ski just like shot off in some random direction and is like 40 feet away. Or maybe you've got everything nearby, but you're just missing one pole. I was pretty surprised to see that both skis were laying neatly behind me and both poles were still attached to my wrist. So yeah, that's where it happened. I mean, I really had no idea. I mean, after I stood up, I kind of felt like something was wrong with my mid back slash chest. Like that feeling where you feel like something is sort of out of alignment, but it'll be gone in a few days or something. Anyways, I clipped back into my skis and skied down the rest of the run. I then proceeded to continue skiing for another two and a half hours until they closed. I returned all my gear, drove to a nearby location, flew my drone, got dinner, basically just went around the rest of my night as if nothing had happened, because honestly, I felt fine. Sleeping that night in the hotel was fine as well. 
The next morning I got up, loaded my luggage in the car and headed to the airport. Still no cause for concern as I felt completely fine. My first flight went well, still no issues. But then, as I was pulling my camera bag down from the overhead compartment, I felt something. It wasn't anything sharp, at least not that I remember, but I just remember having this feeling like, oh, that didn't feel great. And that was when I started noticing some pain in my ribs. I still had one flight to go until I was home, and by that evening, I was in quite a bit of pain. I had my wife check me out as she's a doctor, and initially she thought it was just a bone bruise or that maybe something was out of alignment. So I took some Advil and went to sleep. Fast forward a day or two, and at that point, things were really hurting. I decided to see my primary care doctor, and he ordered an x-ray. A day or so after that, I got the results, and sure enough, one of my ribs was broken. Thankfully for me, though, it was just a crack, and it wasn't displaced. Displaced meaning it broke all the way through and could potentially be putting my lung at risk or something. Displaced ribs would require surgery, a cracked rib you can't really do anything about. And that was kind of the best, but also worst part. I was glad I didn't need surgery and didn't have a collapsed lung, but in order for it to get better, I literally just had to wait for it to heal on its own. In total, I think it took about two and a half to three months for it to fully recover, but I have to say the absolute worst part of having a broken rib was lying down. Oh my gosh, it was the most uncomfortable thing ever. Standing and sitting were fine. I could work at my computer and walk around, but the minute I tried to lay down and go to sleep, it would hurt so badly. For those two and a half to three months, I slept in one position, my left side, because that was the only position I could lay in that hurt less than all the other sleeping positions. But thankfully, my dog Remy kept me in great company as I slept, as you can see in this photo. Anyways, guys, that's my story of how I broke my rib in 2019. Things definitely could have been a lot worse. You know, I could have broken multiple ribs or had one that required surgery or even broken other bones but I'm thankful it wasn't worse than it was. My ribs are feeling completely fine now, though on a few rare occasions in certain positions, I feel like I can feel something different or maybe it's just a small twinge of something that I didn't feel before, but that may just be an internal battle scar. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. I thought it'd be fun to tell it as well as use some of the extra footage I had from my time skiing at Park City to help me tell this story. Let me know in the comments if you've ever broken a bone or if you've ever broken a rib before. Also make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notified whenever I post new videos on this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Peace.